John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. How many of you have been invited to something? Birthdays, weddings, parties. For those of you that haven't raised your hand, I'd like to invite you to church next weekend, 8.30 to 1045. And if you can also make it, we have our annual meeting, so please join us. You've all been invited to something. I remember when I was younger, one of the biggest threats at the playground was over an invitation. If you managed to make someone upset, or someone made you upset, the most tragic thing you could say to someone was, you're not invited to my birthday. You are not invited to my birthday party. And it was devastating to not be invited to someone's birthday party. And this usually resulted in the person saying, I'm so sorry, please, please can I be invited to your birthday? So I was thinking about invitations, thinking about the whole playground scenario. And I was thinking that this really has to do with our desire to be included. We want to be included. We don't like to miss out on things. And today's users of social media know this well as the fear of missing out, or FOMO. You can put a hashtag in front of that if you like. We like to know what's going on. We like to be a part of things. This is why we ask one another on a daily basis, did you see? Or did you hear about? We don't want to miss out on anything. But I wonder if our desire to not miss out on anything, FOMO, is misplaced. You see, we care about things that really in the grand scheme of things don't really matter. But today, in our gospel, we hear that there are more amazing things to be seen. Our readings today are filled with invitations. Samuel is called by God repeatedly, an invitation to listen to what God is doing. Nathaniel is invited by Philip to come and see about this person called Jesus. And in both situations, there is the fear of missing out. Samuel rushes into Eli's room three times to answer the call. He should be sleeping, but the thought that Eli was calling him was too much for him to ignore. It had to be something really important. And Nathaniel, Nathaniel is invited to come and see, but he 
tries to play it cool at first, pretending he's not interested. And in fact, he kind of uses a joke. He says, so I said to the guy, what good comes out of Nazareth? Am I right? But deep down, he wants to know. He's curious. He doesn't want to miss out on something. So Philip tells him, come and see. And he's hooked. And amazing is what is promised, and amazing is what happens. The invitation to come and see does not disappoint. Samuel calls out, here I am. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And God speaks. Nathaniel agrees to come and see about this Jesus of Nazareth and hears about all these great promises. The angels of God ascending and descending, the heavens opening up. Samuel and Nathaniel are invited to an encounter with God. God draws close to Samuel and Nathaniel, and they cannot resist the invitation to experience what this God is about. So what about our invitation? Where do we get our invitation? Well, in the waters of baptism, we are certainly invited to be part of the family of God. In communion, we are invited to the table for a meal, bread and wine that unites us together in the body of Christ. See, it is God who calls us. And in that call, there is a response required. Samuel could have easily gone back to sleep. Nathaniel could have said, you know what, Philip, I don't want to come and see. There's a response. So what will our response be? Will we come forward in baptism? Will we come to the meal? And these invitations, they hold so much more than water or bread and wine. Just as Jesus tells Nathaniel, you will see greater things than these. The invitation is not only life-giving, but it is life-changing. It requires us to respond, and yet it promises freedom and forgiveness and life. It's an invitation to discipleship, to follow Jesus. But what if someone never gets an invitation? What if someone is never invited to church? What if someone has never heard about God, never heard about what God has done in Christ? What about them? What happens? Well, in the words of one of my seminary professors, go and tell them. So if you know someone who hasn't heard, go and tell them. Invite them. Extend the invitation. You see, we've all had someone in our lives that has extended us the invitation. That's why we're here. Many of us were baptized as infants, but even then, you were receiving the invitation from your parents who were passing it on. We all come to the table as invited guests, as invited members of the body of Christ. We're all here at church in response to an invitation and for anyone who's a guest or a visitor today, know that you are invited. You are welcome here. We are invited to hear God's story. We're invited to experience God's promises. We are invited to the greater things that God is doing in the world. Because we are invited, we are called to invite. We are called to invite others.
to experience what God is doing in their lives. We invite because it is a life-changing invitation, one where we can't possibly remain the same after we receive it. So where are you being invited by God? Where is God calling your name? Will you come and see? Will you invite others to hear what God is doing? The invitation is life-changing, and it requires a response. So my prayer for us all this morning is that we would cry out, Here I am. Speak, for your servant is listening. And when we do, we will most certainly see more amazing things. Amen.